wait, we, we'd be allowing you to take how much of our first like year, essentially years worth of royalty checks for. How did you get your movie Electric Love on Hulu? So we, uh, we went through a distributor, Gravitas, if I can say, and, uh, and we had a really great experience with them. Um, you know, this was a few years ago and we had a friend who was another producer and, uh, I think he also does a little bit of distribution himself and he had made the offer to kind of introduce us. Um, you know, Gravitas, I believe is, is pretty open to, uh, filmmakers submitting their work to them. I think, you know, this has been a little while. I'm pretty sure their email is like up on their site and they, they kind of welcome filmmakers to send, send their work in. So, uh, we, we had the deal with the Gravitas they were great, you know, for, 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 I was the first time, uh, film, film producer, uh, seeking distribution. And so for me, I thought the experience was really, really good. You learn plenty. You, you, I have always been negotiating. So for me, I always knew I was going to like be trying to play hardball and retain as much ownership and yada, yada, um, really protect your, protect your, your investment, your, your project. Um, and, but I, I really had no complaints with them. Like I thought that they were fantastic. I thought that they got the movie out there that they licensed and we, we went with them globally. And so they got some great, uh, overseas licenses for us. We, we were out, um, uh, in the UK and a friend of mine saw our, our movie on TV. It was like playing on repeat on, on the TV all the time over there. My friend called me up. He's like, you, you're on TV. And I was like, oh my God, yes, I made it. It's happening. Um, but we got the news like probably within a few months of securing the deal with them that they had negotiated to deal with Hulu and we were just over the moon. I mean, over the moon, you know, and, and now we're huge Hulu fans. Like we're like Hulu, everyone get Hulu, watch it. It's on Hulu. Everybody watch it. And we love it. And I think Hulu is doing some really cool things with horror yes. mm -hmm. um, and indep independent films too. And so, yeah, yeah and, and documentaries. And so I'm you know, I'm going to hopefully be trying to knock on that door again for our distribution of Val. Very cool. Yeah. Did you also try to get it on other platforms like uh, Netflix and mm -hmm. Apple TV or HBO? Well, so yeah, Gravitas do does all that. This, this is something new that I'm learning is, um, you know, you might try, like I as the producer would want to sort of circumvent the distributor because they certainly take their portion, although they they do a little bit of work there for you as well. But you, you it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to go directly to Netflix or, or Apple TV. And I'm sure that that's possible, but we didn't have the connections to go directly. And I believe now, if you aren't already, uh, you know, having a relationship with that company, you do, it's like required to go through a intermediary, like a distributor like Gravitas. Um, and, you know, like I said, this is, people have all different types of experience. I can only speak to my own, but that that's what our experience was. When did you sign with your distributor? I want to say we sold, we, we signed uh, with, with Gravitas for Electric Love around the fall of 2018. Um, you know, and, and even then we, we had the deal locked, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the, the movie is going to be out for viewing. And that was something that we learned, you know, through doing is like, you think you, you sign with the distributor, that's that. Like, when's my, my movie is going to be out next week, right? Um, but they didn't release it until the spring of next year. So we were just waiting all, all winter, like waiting excitedly for our movie to come out. And it was really exciting when it did. We had this whole big happy dance at home. <laughs> did you have a sales agent? We did not. I know that there is a ton of value with sales agents. Um, at this point for us, especially with the budgets that we've been working with, you know, it really behooves us to try our best to do everything ourselves because then we can retain ownership and, you know, sales agents certainly come with fees and, um, either percentage fees or they, uh, are tacked on with marketing expenses as well. We did have it as a long discussion. We were really interested in a particular sales agent, but eventually once they talked to us about what the marketing fees were going to be, we were kind of thinking to ourselves like, wait, we, we'd be allowing you to take how much of our first like year, essentially years worth of royalty checks for, you to like kind of wine and dine people over in con. And, and, and I say that like just with my own, my own perspective, I think there's a lot of value to sales agents and, and a lot of value to them having a marketing spend to go out there and really like push your movie. And he might've even been able to get us a little bit more, but at the end of the day, it didn't, it just didn't feel right. It felt better to retain ownership and, and go with something that was maybe going to be a leaner marketing strategy, but lower cost. Did you receive any upfront money? We were offered an advance, um, but it was contingent upon them taking an extra 5% of ownership. 
And you know, that for, it just kind of depends on your situation. You might be like, nope, I have investors I need to be paying back straight away, or I need this money now. And in that case, you might be in a situation where you need to go ahead and accept that. Um, but for us, we were, you know, we, we were just able to go ahead and say, we would rather retain more ownership of the movie. Don't worry about the advance. We'll wait for the first check. And then you realize you still have all these delivery costs. So forget about the first check. I'll see the second one, maybe. Because <laughs> the delivery fees, I'm sure seasoned filmmakers understand delivery fees in a way better capacity than I did. But at the time, I did not know that. I did not know about delivery fees with distribution. And it really rocks your world in the indie space. You know, you think like, you're going to spend how much money delivering this? And I mean, for me, I negotiate every little thing. I make sure I get the best rate as a producer. I stretch every dollar. And in these distribution, or I'm sorry, delivery fees, delivery fees, um, you know, you're thinking like, did you negotiate that? Like, I don't think, I don't know if they are. You know, I'm, I'm not saying anything, anyone did anything wrong. I'm just saying like, I certainly, I, if I had the capacity to ever get into that space, you know, God willing, that would, that would be fun. But it's really not not where my heart's at. So I'll let the the distributors do what they they need. I'll uh, make sure to cap uh, uh, delivery fees in the future. And and they were they they were like capped to a, a reasonable amount. But I'm just saying, like as someone who was not aware that that was a thing, to see that like bottom line price tag, you're like, that's like twenty percent of the film, <laughs> you know, and you like kind of freak out a little bit. Um, yeah, and then you just kind of get through it and hopefully lock some good licensing deals. How long did it take you to receive your first payment and how frequent are the payments? Hmm. Um, I want to say, so to, to like jump off of the delivery fees, that kind of ate up the majority of our first check, if not the entire first check. Um, and then we receive checks quarterly. So, you know, you'll, it'll be uh, once a quarter closes, then it's about 30 days to let your distributor do their accounting. And then within like a few weeks after that, you'll receive a check in the mail. Um, and that, and that they've been wonderful. That's something I, I can't say highly enough for Gravitas. They are like a schedule with, with the checks and it's been fantastic. And they've locked us some wonderful deals because what we've noticed, and again, just our experience, um, the licensing deals are where we see the, the bulk of our, our money for smaller things like Amazon rentals, you know, kind of iTunes rentals. I think we'd have to be like a Keanu Reeves to really move the needle financially there. Uh, for now, we see the bulk of our, our money coming back through all these licensing deals via different countries and, and uh, streaming deals like Hulu. Have you noticed one particular country is very much into the film? I think our best li international licensing deal was either the UK or Germany because we got those deals and we were like, oh, Germany, eh? And, and Germany was great. Like they, they liked it. They had a decent deal over there. The UK was a little bit bigger. And then our, our biggest deal was domestic. Yeah, it was, and I and I think that kind of speaks to to the genre, you know, where it's like it's a romantic comedy, English speaking. You know, it kind of it's very. I think it's just very much of of America. You know, like it just kind of feels like the audience is here. Not to say anything about internationally audi international audiences. I just think that like the concentration of people who would like the film were just U.S. based. What lessons have you learned from distributing Electric Love that you're going to take forward with Val? Excellent question. Um, it's something I've been thinking about lately because we're, we're just on the cusp of like getting some more serious conversations going for distribution of Val. Um, I will absolutely be you know, looking for, I'll, I'll be seeking a, like a global distributor. So we, we really liked that. We really enjoyed working with one, and one company to do the entire, the whole entire package we'll be putting a lot of focus on the licensing. So we'll be talking to them about what their projections are for different countries. And, and this is a horror uh, genre film with Val. So that I think can translate to many more, like you don't need to know English to know how to be afraid. You know, you see they might, I mean, obviously there are subtitles as well, but there's a little bit more give there with the story. Um, and then of course, like I was just talking about delivery fees, you know, really having a discussion with whomever our distributor ends up being about what are these delivery costs going to be, and let's make sure we have a reasonable cap on them. Um, like I said, I, I think that it, it was all fine with our last deal. I'm not, I'm not saying anything bad about that. It's just, it's more of like a revelation, like, okay, now that I know that, I also took that into consideration with this entire film's budget. You know, I understand that there's going to be this tacked on amount, which could be, I mean, it, it can vary. I'll, I'll give out like a spectrum, but 
to be something like in our electric love range, the delivery fees could have been anywhere from ten to thirty thousand uh, dollars. We were kind of somewhere in the middle there, but and I'm sure on a bigger budget film, perhaps more. You know, I can only like I can only speak to what my experiences have been. And with Val, you know, I, I kept kept that in mind, what the delivery fees might run, and keeping that in mind when we were coming up with the budget for it, and trying to make sure that we kept that in mind that even though we've our production budget is this and our post budget is this don't forget about delivery fees i mean they come out of your first check unless unless you have a distributor where you have a different deal as of now i only know indie filmmakers who absorb the costs of their own delivery fees <laughs> what are some of the things that are included in the delivery fees mm. It's, it's so Aaron is definitely the better person to ask for this one, but I do know it's a lot of things where it's like you need to get subtitles for every different country that you know you're going to be licensing around. Every export and, and delivery on all these different drives, and there's the M&E track, you know, which is like these other files. One day, let me tell you a horror story about Electric Love with the delivery fees, because like I said, I'm I'm a thrifty producer. I'm constantly trying to stretch a dollar four ways from Sunday. So we find out that there's this fee that we can pay on top of what we were already paying to get uh, the M&E something where like everywhere that every time that there was a line, like someone speaks in the film, you needed the time code, the exact precise time code of the start of the line and the end of the line and then like some other information for every single line. And I think that the price, I don't even know what it was going to cost. It was going to cost something like maybe a thousand, maybe a couple thousand. Who, who can remember at this time? But I was like, I've got some time. I'll do it. And I did it. And I did it. And it was the worst thing ever. <laughs> no, it wasn't. But, you know, I, I sat down. I had like some music blasting and I treated myself to some Chipotle and I like just just bunkered down and did it. And it, blessed Aaron, he would come by every now and then give me like a little massage or something. And I would, I would complain but in the way that you complain where you just want someone to be like oh yeah it sucks and so I would do that like oh, this sucks and he would <laughs> give me all the charity that I needed at that moment and then I would soldier on and keep going and I think it took me like two full massive days maybe even three and when I finished it I was like I don't want to hear anything else about these deliveries like this is my contribution to to saving money in the bottom line and I do aspire to be a producer that uh can afford to go ahead and hire someone to do that for Ooh, me. That's tedious work. It was it was tedious, but you know, mm -hmm. at the same time, not the worst thing because your mm -hmm. your your brain kind of goes on that autopilot where you just get to relax and you're just like, da, 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 da. it's very boring work. But like you said, tedious, yeah. So yeah, not great, but I'm proud of it now. I saved money for the project, and that is one of the things as a producer that I I continue to be proud of myself for is I know how to really stretch the dollar, really like be uh, very particular about the budget, stay on target with the budget. And if we have new expenses, well, if I can learn how to do it, I'll go ahead and I'll do it myself and, and you know, su submit the, the correct work that need, that's being needed. So um, that's good. Oh, that's, that's really <laughs> cool, man. You should have made a video of behind the scenes of that, of all, like, all three days or two days, whatever. I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> It exists very clearly in my memory. Like I know that day. I remember exactly where I was sitting, exact everything. I'm like, oh yeah. And we had a filmmaker friend who was in, almost paralleling us in distribution. Like he was going with the same distributor and he was doing the same thing. And I would text him being like, have you gotten this file prepared? And he's like, I think I'm just going to hire someone to do it. And I was like, Shakespeare's <laughs> friend, friend Lily and my friend, like, all right, but I did it myself. Pat me on the back. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a lot. <laughs> it was, yeah.